Hi guys, welcome to this session on Microsoft Excel. In this module, I want to talk to you about the difference between using subtotals and the COUNTIF function. So on the screen, I've got some data and I want to do subtotals on this column, which is colored yellow. Now, when you use the subtotal feature, you have to sort the column that you want to do it on. So data A to Z, sorted that one. Now, also on the data tab is the subtotals feature, subtotals, and then you get this box appearing, asking you which column do you want to do it on. It always starts with the first column. You can actually highlight column F in this example, and it will just pick up that column, but let's just change this. So I want course attended. You can't use the sum function because it's text, so you have to count it. And then I want the answer or the result to go underneath course attended. And when I click OK, it will do the subtotals. So there you go. You get these numbers in the left corner. Two gives you the subtotals. One gives you the grand total. Three expands everything. You've also got these collapsible bars where you can click on these and do the same sort of thing, achieve the same sort of thing, and maybe just expand one of them like so. So if I click back on three... So that is better, in my view, than doing filters like this, where you're just selecting the, the item you want. So if I want equal ops, I'll just click OK to that, and it's just showing me the equal ops, and there's 27. But then if I wanted a different one, say leadership, I would have to keep doing this to change whichever one I wanted to see, in this case 23. So I'll just put that back to all. Now the problem with subtotals is... It's great if you've got to do something quite quick, like somebody rings up and asks you this question, what's the breakdown in terms of courses? You can just put it on, sort the list and put subtotals on. But if you're using this over and over again, if this list grows, what you have to do is you have to take subtotals off. So if I just go back into subtotals, remove all, I'll just copy a few of these to simulate adding extra records. So I'll copy those and then paste them below. So you, you took subtotals off. You would then have to resort the column that you want to do it on, which I've now done, and then go back into subtotals and put it on again. And again, if I go back to 2, it will show me the subtotals. So that's gone up to 82 now in total. Now that is a bit of a faff about that I'm not prepared to do. If that's how I've got my data, I'm not interested in that sort of stuff. You could use a pivot table, I know. But I'm not talking about pivot tables in this video. This is subtotals. So what I would rather do is use the COUNTIF function. If I've got a table that is growing or shrinking like this one, like the demonstration I just did, I would go for the COUNTIF function. If your table is static and it's a one-off, subtotals is great. Let me just get rid of this. So subtotals, remove. Now column F, if I click on the F of column F, I've called that courses. And what I'm going to do is create a little table up here of each of the categories. So I'm just going to move that into I1. If I hold my control key down, you see a little plus there on the mouse pointer. If I let go of my mouse, that just copies that. Equal ops. Same for leadership. I just want a little table of all the categories up here. And then further down is Microsoft Office. Just push that one up to the top. Get it up there. You obviously can do copy and paste if you want. Control key drops it down and then I just need to widen these out a little bit so you can see them. So the COUNTIF function is going to count how many items it, there are in that column depending on the little table at the top and the formula is equals count if once you open the bracket you get the little help coming up there's the help it wants to know what the range is that is the range I've called it courses I could have clicked on the F there but courses comma now the first criteria is equal ops so if i hadn't done a little table at the top like that i would have to type equal ops inside quotes and then i would have to keep changing it for leadership and microsoft office but that'll do what i've got at the moment that's probably a better way of doing it tick pull that over so that is now giving me a running total. If I just put a border on that, and maybe I want a little chart on that. A little 2D column chart, don't need the title. 
make it quite small, push that up there, make it the same size, like so. So that is now looking at this data. Uh, I like my chart ones to be black, just think it looks better. So that's now at the top of the screen and that's going to pick up any additions at the bottom there. So if I grab some more data, so there's 27 equal ops at the minute, so I'll copy this. So this is simulating adding some more records at the bottom. Control V, paste. At the top, that's picked it up straight away. It's gone to 42. Just press escape to get rid of the marching ants. So now I've got 42. So this is the information that I require uh, all the time. So it's a table I've set up with the counter function. And no matter what I do in this table now, this will reflect the, the, the scores on the doors, if you like. So that's just a very quick video of what the difference between subtotals and the COUNTIF function is when to use subtotals, when to use COUNTIF. So hopefully that was of use. Thank you for your time. I'll catch you on the next one.